This video is intended to extend your knowledge of dilations into the coordinate plane. Now, most dilations in the coordinate plane use the origin as the center of dilation. If the center of dilation is not specified for a problem, then it's okay to assume that the center of dilation is going to be the origin. If, of course, you are told which point to use as the center of dilation, then you should go ahead and use that point. All right, let's jump in and get the fun started. Number one says, given triangle ABC with those vertices, they want us to graph and state the coordinates of triangle ABC prime, which is going to be the image of triangle ABC, after a dilation about the origin of scale factor two. So that O stands for the origin, two is the scale factor. And then once we do that, they want us to figure out a rule that'll map triangle ABC to the new triangle without having to draw the dilation. So of course, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by graphing triangle ABC by plotting one vertex at a time. So there's vertex A, there's vertex B, and vertex C is right there. I'll grab my straight edge and go ahead and connect each vertex. And I've got my beautiful little triangle. All right, next step. I need to dilate these each with a scale factor of two using the origin as my center of rotation, or center of dilation, I'm sorry. So distance from the origin to C is two units. I want C prime to be four units or double that. So C prime is gonna be right up there at zero four. B prime, if I extend that line that connects the center of dilation to B and keep going and make my distance double what it was, B prime is going to be right there. And likewise, A prime, A prime, if I go on a slope of one, it's two diagonal boxes away. So its image, A prime, is going to be double that distance or four diagonals away. And there's my new triangle looking as I expected, similar to the first, and then all the angle measures are the same. It's just the distances that are different. So now I've got to go ahead and plot those points or name those points. A prime has coordinates negative four, negative four. B prime has coordinates two, negative two. And C prime, of course, lies at the point whose coordinates are zero, four. So what they're looking for, what they want us to do is they want us to find a rule that'll allow us to map triangle ABC onto the new triangle without having to draw the picture. So in other words, it wants to know what's the relationship between A and A prime? How do I get from B to B prime? And how do I get from C to C prime without having to draw the picture? Hopefully by now you've figured out that since we use a scale factor of two, these guys are all twice as big as their original was. So all I'm going to do when I'm dilating with my center of dilation at the origin, it's okay now to take this shortcut and simply multiply each coordinate by the scale factor. And of course, it's important to remember that this only works with the center of dilation at the origin. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Number two gives us the equation of a line, and it wants us to dilate that using a scale factor of three halves centered at the origin. And they want us to write the equation that represents the image of this line after the dilation. Now, this question is an important question because on the materials that I was sent from the state, it was on both sets of sample questions. So my inkling or my gut tells me that this is probably the type of question that you'll have to be able to answer on the Regents exam at the end of the year. I'm gonna start by going ahead and graphing that line whose equation is two X minus four. You can either build a table of values or I'm gonna use the slope and the y-intercept. His y-intercept here is at the point zero, negative four. And his slope is two.
So there's where that line is going to go. Beautiful. And I'll label him y equals 2x minus 4. Now, we've got to dilate a line. In order to dilate a line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a couple of points on the line. They can be any points that you want. I'm going to pick the y-intercept because it's going to be easy to work with. So 0, negative 4. And I'm also going to pick the x-intercept because that'll be fairly simple to work with. 2, comma 0. And after a dilation, with the center as the or origin, and a scale factor of 3 halves, I need to figure out where that point is going to go. Well, the rule that we learned in the first example says simply multiply each coordinate by the scale factor. In this case, 3 halves. So I'm going to multiply the x value, 0, times 3 halves. And when I multiply 0 times 3 halves, I end up with 0. And then I'm going to multiply negative 4 times 3 halves. And if you can multiply negative 4 times 3 halves doing uh, a little bit of mental math, then good for you. If that's hard for you to do mentally, grab your calculator and multiply those guys using your calculator. At any rate, you may want to men multiply mentally and then check on your calculator just to make sure that you haven't made any mistakes. So 0, negative 6. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for the second point. I'm going to go ahead and dilate that with the center at the origin and a scale factor of 3 halves. So 2 times 3 halves is going to be 3. 0 times 3 halves is going to be 0. And again, if you're unsure about any of those calculations, grab your calculator, let that do the heavy lifting for you. So 0, negative 6 is going to be right there. 3, 0 is going to be that point right there. I'm going to, again, grab my trusty straight edge. And we see that our new line is parallel to the old one. We need to write an equation for it. So parallel, we know, have equal slopes. So I know that the slope of the line is the same as the slope of my original line, 2. And it's pretty easy to figure out from this picture that the y-intercept is at 0, 6 or sorry, 0, negative 6. So the equation of this line is going to be y equals 2x minus 6. If you wanted to, you could put this in slope-intercept form and pick any slope, sorry, slope point-slope form and pick any pair of, any point from that line and write the equation in point-slope form as well. All right, moving along now to this third example. They've given us a rectangle. They're asking us to draw the dilation of the rectangle with the center of dilation at point D. So this is going to be a little bit different because the center of dilation is no longer at the origin now. And using a scale factor of 1 half. So of course the first thing I'm going to do is go plot the points. And I'll draw my rectangle. And now we want the center of dilation to be at point D. So that's a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and make point D a different color. And a scale factor of 1 half. So remember that scale factor of 1 half tells us that our, the distance from our center of dilation to our new point, our image, is going to be half that of what it was from the uh, center of dilation to the original point. So for instance, looking at this, the distance from point D to point E is 6 units. The distance now to E prime is going to be half of that, or 3 units. So there will be E prime. Distance from D to G is 4. So the new distance is going to be half of that, or 2, making that my g prime. And then to f, I originally went 1, 2, 3, 4 diagonals. And I could probably figure that one out quite easily just because I know that my new image is also going to be a rectangle. And there's point f at the point whose coordinates are 0, 2. So there's my new rectangle. It doesn't state anywhere that I need to state the coordinates, so I'm not going to do that. I'm simply going to go ahead and draw that rectangle. 
All right, so there it is, a snapshot on dilations in the coordinate plane. If you have any questions at this point, go ahead and write them down so that you'll remember to ask me about them the next time that you come back to class. You do need to complete page seven so that you can check your understanding of what you've seen. Make sure you're able to apply what you've learned.